guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. One of my goals for my channel this year and to share with you guys is to build model communities. Now as you guys probably know my fish room is comprised mainly of 75 gallon tanks, 55 gallon tanks, and 20 longs. So I thought I would take the opportunity throughout this upcoming year to build model communities in each of them with a central theme. And today we're going to start a 75 gallon nano South American community. So the first thing I have to do is drain and empty the tanks so that we can get started. So let's do it. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this aquarium that, um, you know, this has been a quarantine aquarium for about 10 years, is just remove everything from it. And now I will save all the various plants that are in here and set aside the driftwood, but for the most part, it's all gotta go. Now I just use a bucket lid to hold my plants when I'm aquascaping. It's super, super, super high tech. Um, and the goals for this aquarium will be a community aquarium based around a loose geographical point that is sustainable and achievable by all of you. So we're not gonna be using exceptionally rare species for the most part. And I'm gonna stock it real time for you. So this is actually being shot today. Now, I'm in a unique situation in that I have lots and lots of materials. So for this build, I'm going to be utilizing things from my personal stash. In future builds, I think that I'm going to try and uh, go shopping at box stores locally in order to do a more accurate representation of what you guys could find locally. Now there are a few um, otocinclus in this aquarium, as well as I just saw in a mono shrimp, and I'll just leave them where they are. I probably won't bother trying to catch them out. And this aquarium will end up being low-tech planted, though I'll probably, there's an oto there, I'll probably utilize uh, some good quality substrate in case I decide to use any uh, stem plants, most specifically probably crypts, maybe even some rotala, and I will be replacing the light on here. The light that's on this aquarium right now is 10 years old and it's simply a shop light and it's entirely likely that's what I'll get to replace it. But I don't know yet. I've got to see what I have in all of my uh, equipment rooms. So again, I'm just pulling out the plants to potentially reuse and any of the decor. Um, then next I will try and remove all the red root floater that's all over this aquarium. Siphon out the, uh, the sand that's in there and clean the tank and refill it. Now, as you guys know, with my quarantine tanks, I have very different goals than I do with display tanks. So this tank was never intended to be particularly beautiful. It was just meant to house fish comfortably and, uh, you know, allow them to color up, which is why there were plants in it. So I do not want any floaters in this aquarium when I'm done. Um, not of these types anyway. They're, it's entirely possible I'll use something like Brazilian Pennywort. But again, we have to see what I have around the fish room. The goal of this tank is to only use materials that I already have, except for possibly lighting. So I'm just going through and trying to scoop out as much of the floating plant matter as possible to then drain and siphon out the sand that's in here. Now what I'll do as well right now is take an algae scraper or a razor blade and really clean the interior glass really well. This will also suspend any detritus stuck in the sand, as well as hopefully moving any residual floaters that are stuck to the glass to the surface for removal. Now as I mentioned, this is an old aquarium. It's been running for at least eight years, probably closer to 10. So it's very imperfect. It has some etching, some scratches, and just normal wear and tear. But it will serve our purposes beautifully for setting up a model community. Now to siphon out the gravel, I just buy, or I just grab a large diameter hose, start my siphon, usually by filling it with water, plugging off the end, and then letting it start to drain. 
and then I'll simply siphon out all of this substrate. And I find that this is the easiest way to remove substrate as long as you're draining the tank as well. And the substrate that was in here is simply an inert black sand, which would be fine for my model community, but I have a lot of soil here and I'd really like to use some more of it. It'll also soften the water a bit, which isn't required for these fish, but may make breeding them easier. Now I do generally use drain ports to drain my aquariums. I have them all around the fish room, but because I'm siphoning off sand, stop my siphon, switch buckets. Um, because I'm you, draining out the sand, I obviously don't want those to go into my pumps that remove the wastewater. And to stop my siphon, I just put my thumb over the ends, move it across the brace, and remove my thumb, and the siphon starts again. When I'm ready to drain all the water from the aquarium for further cleaning, I will be draining to my drain ports, which will be probably here in a minute or so. Now, it's not absolutely imperative that I get all of this substrate out, but I do want to get the bulk of it just so that there isn't any mixing with my soil. That can be a bit unattractive. So as you can see, that's the bulk of the sand out of the aquarium. Now I'm gonna set up my large siphon and drain the aquarium the whole way down so that I can clean the glass and the decor and prepare decor. To do that, I'll start a siphon. And run it to my drain port. Again, keeping my thumb over the end of the hose. In order to prevent my siphon from falling out, I am going to clip it in place with a hose clamp or with a light clamp. So you can see I have the siphon run to my drain ports from the aquarium. And now I'll just let it drain. And as it's draining, I'm going to take another siphon, my same black one, and just clean up the floor of the aquarium. I'll also be squeezing out the sponge filters. Now it takes quite a while to drain a 75 in my fish room, um, especially with just a gravity siphon. If I was smart, I would set up a pump, but I don't feel like digging one out, so I just have to be patient. I'll let it get down to about an inch or even with a trim at the bottom and then take a siphon and manually get any of the detritus that had been suspended and then settled on the floor of the aquarium. I went ahead and cleaned my sponge filters and used a magic eraser to wipe down the inside glass, but I'll probably do that again. The goal is to get restore this tank to as close to new as possible despite it being so old. I may even wipe it down with vinegar in order to clear the glass a bit more. Another thing that I'm doing while my plants are out of water is just taking this spray bottle and misting them down. This way they don't become too dried out to use again. So every maybe 10 or 15 minutes I'll just spritz them down. Now I just have some vinegar on this rag. I'm going right, to wipe down the outside of the aquarium that's been covered with water spots for years. Try and get it looking a little cleaner. Vinegar is one of my favorite things to use to clean glass. Um, often I'll just use newsprint to do so. Just rub it on. And then the dry part of the rag to take it off. And it really does a good job of removing those residual water spots. You can see that the erosion line at the top or the etched line from my water is disappearing by doing this. It's really a good trick. Now what I do next, um, unfortunately I thought I hit record and I didn't, was to fish in this giant piece of wood. And what I've done is I've collected a bunch of different pieces of manzanita, various sizes and shapes from my personal collection in order to add them in here. Now I don't have very much clearance, so you can imagine there was quite a bit of cursing and wrangling and twisting to get the wood in here. Um, but it did fit and I'm going to add some substrate and then put the other pieces of wood where I want them to create sort of an underwater tangle. Now the substrate I've chosen for today is some Tropica Aquarium Soil Powder. And that's because I had ordered some a while ago and it came in ripped, so I already have open bags. So I figured I might as well utilize it since I can't sell it. Now I do not rinse this substrate. And I'm just gonna pour it in and move it where I want it. 
So I finally have the tank all drained down and just a little bit of substrate in there. Now, because I couldn't drain the water 100%, this tank will likely be pretty murky when I fill it up. But what I'm gonna do now is just take some more of my driftwood pieces and try and create tangles within the aquarium. Now, I'm not going for a super fancy, crazy aquascape here. I want this tank to be maintainable, plantable, and provide spots for my fish to breed. Because as I mentioned, this is going to be a South American community. So I'm just taking all sorts of bits and pieces of driftwood I had laying around, sort of mixing them together in a way that I think makes sense. Now this is not pre-soaked driftwood, so I may end up having to uh, weigh the, some of the pieces down with rock but generally what I do is just try and use a range of sizes of wood that sort of work together and look as though they could have possibly come from the same piece while still providing nooks and crannies for me to attach simple low-light plants as well as for the fish to establish caves and territories this will likely house dwarf cichlids um, so they are basically substrate leaf litter spawners, so I'm going to be adding some almond leaves as well, and then some low light plants. This tank will end up with a lot of tannins, which I know isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I particularly enjoy it. When you're working with hardscapes, don't be afraid to break it to make it look the way you want. While it's really tempting to have all those pieces of little tiny branchy driftwood in an aquarium, the reality is, is over time they break down pretty quickly and just make a mess. So I tend to break the smallest pieces off. But as you can see, I'm just laying pieces of wood over other pieces of wood in order to create these tangles. So far there's about 12 pieces of wood in this aquarium and it's starting to come together. Now I am making sure to keep my sponge filters clear of wood so that I will be able to easily remove them to clean them. Let's get a different view. So as you can see this is just a pile of wood. It's nothing fancy but it does have a sort of directional pool. It utilizes a lot of the aquarium but still allows some open water for other species to swim. It also has plenty of nooks and crannies for me to attach rhizome plants, add leaf litter, or put dwarf cichlid caves in order to promote spawning. Now I'm simply refilling the aquarium through a colander just so that the substrate doesn't get quite as disrupted. Hopefully this thing will be clear enough for me to add some plants today, but if not, I'll move those other plants into other aquariums until I'm ready for them. So I had to put a couple of rocks in there to hold down the wood. Um, it should waterlog relatively quickly, but I think I'm going to add a little bit of leaf litter in. Um, things are still pretty cloudy. Now you could boil these leaves to make them um, sink right away, but I find that they're pretty easy to just sort of wedge underneath until they're waterlogged and then I can move them around. So it's been about two days uh, since I filled the aquarium and I just wedged all those plants that I had on that bucket lid into little nooks and crannies to keep them wet rather than adding them to another aquarium. You can see I did end up having to use a big rock to hold down the thickest piece of wood. Um, but I would imagine by next week I'll be able to remove that. Now I know I said that I was just going to use plants that I had. But I went ahead and ordered some more um, different species of Anubias and some Bucephalandras. And uh, I realized I didn't have any or enough Brazilian Pennywort to pull for this aquarium. And I really want that in here. So I ordered some of that too. And then I've got to rob some crypts from various aquariums and uh, just wait until the wood is fully waterlogged for me to adjust. It's sort of floated all over the place and is a bit of a mess right now, but you know, this is a work in progress, so I hope you guys will stick with me. And you can see that it's starting to develop some tannins from all that wood and leaf litter. But again, I'm totally fine with that and the fish that I'm likely to choose for this aquarium won't mind it either. I may end up doing a poll to see what schooling fish you guys want me to add, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to move in my group of a Pistogramma trifasciata to this aquarium. 
just because I would really like to spawn them and I thought it'd be fun to show you guys. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Now I am really not in a hurry to get this aquarium completed. Um, right now it just has about a half dozen otocinclus that were in the aquarium from the beginning if you remember correctly. Uh, once, once things settle down, I'll probably do some water changes just to clean up the substrate a little bit. And once my new plants come in, I'll show you planting that. Maybe even on Thursday, we'll have to see. Um, but for now, it's a start. I'm just waiting for the wood to waterlog. And again, for me, stocking the aquarium is more of a marathon than a sprint. I really like to let the plants establish and not overwhelm things too quickly in order to have long-term success. So I'll probably add the rest of the otocinclus I have in other parts of the fish room in here. Maybe some of the Hypopotoma gulaire, which are the giant otos. I have a couple of them around. Um, then the Epistos, and then I'll get your guys' input on what schooling fish you would like to see in here. I would like to put dwarf pencils, some little tetras, uh, maybe even some catfish. We'll have to see. So, but as always, your guys' uh, input is super, super important to me. So let me know below what you would like to see. As always, thanks for your continued support. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com. Also, make sure you have that notification bell hit because I will be going live again on Friday.